Uh, today we're going to be discussing future 6G coexistence in the 17.7 to 23.6 gigahertz band. My name is Grant, I'm a junior and I'm an electrical and computer engineer. And my name is Lila, I'm also a junior and an electrical and computer engineer. Uh, so a little bit about spectrum allocation in this band. Today we're going to be talking about two incumbents. We have radio astronomy as well as Earth Exploration Satellite Services. The area shown in gray is the proposed location of 6G in this band. Um, and it is currently labeled as mobile services. As you can see, there is potential for both in-band and adjacent band interference. Okay, so jumping into 6G. 6G, as described by the previous team, is the sixth generation standard for cellular broadband, and we're expecting deployment around 2030, uh, following a 10-year cycle of all the other generations. Still under development, still a lot, very hypothetical, uh, but most of the cool stuff, once the experimentation is happening up in the higher frequencies, we're looking down in the upper mid-band, which is mostly for mobile communications in urban areas which balances good data rates with decent amounts of range. Policy in the last few years coming out of both the, both the House and the Senate, uh, creating task forces and exploratory committees to look into possible regulatory issues, possible technical issues, economic impacts, uh, things like that. We still don't have technical specifications for 6G yet, but we're not expecting those until the latter half of the decade. What does it suggest that it can do everything. Uh, they say that it can solve all the problems that they said 5G could solve. We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, a proliferation of the Internet of Things and the increase of speed in that sense. Um, but again, we are looking at mobile comms, not so much the other applications. So let's talk a little bit about the incumbents. Uh, first, we have radio astronomy. So just like visual light astronomy, captures data using optical waves. Um, Radio astronomy uses radio waves. So it's able to collect this data and analyze it and turn it into images. On the left, we have an image that is created with both visual light data and radio astronomy data. However, radio astronomy is highly susceptible to human-made radio emissions because it is highly sensitive. Um, specifically in the range we're talking about between 23.6 and 24 gigahertz, there is a only detection happening and it's a protected band by the FCC and ITU. For Earth Exploration Satellite Services, the band that we are looking at has integrated water vapor detection happening, which is vital for weather prediction and precipitation. It uses passive sensors. We have an example here on the global precipitation measurement for observatory shown on the left. Um, the specific instrument that is using the passive sensors to detect water vapor is shown on the right. It's called the GPM microwave imager. Um, and it looks at both our band as well as other bands to detect precipitation. So according to NASA, a single emitter, for instance, something in the 6G range, is unlikely to cause interference, but many emitters are more likely to cause interference. Specifically, the big concern is if there is interference that causes data that is corrupt, and we are, don't know about this and use the data for weather prediction. However, the, data, the prediction is wrong. A little bit about our interference geometry. In the bottom left, we have a 6G transceiver that is communicating to and from a 6G mobile device. However, an out-of-bounds interference signal is picked up by, for instance, the global precipitation measurement microwave like measure. Um, and to go into a little bit more, down in the right-hand corner, you see that we have some no recommended negative 50 decibel watts uh, leakage into the band allocated for EESS. Unfortunately, the FCC, well, this is also for 5G in a similar range, uh, the FCC decided, no, we're not going to require that, we're only going to require negative 20 decibel watts, which is, as we discussed recently in class, about a thousand uh, magnitude, like three orders of magnitude of difference. This can cause up to uh, one or two degrees misprediction of temperature, one or two centimeters misprediction of rainfall, and it, according to some uh, analysis, would have mispredicted the path of Hurricane Sandy to stay off the coast of the U.S., which is pretty different from what actually happened. Um, an issue timeline, starting in late 2021, we have some of the first legislation uh, looking at possible impacts of 6G. In early 2022, we established a roadmap, and throughout this past year, the Technical Advisory Council has been meeting to inform the FCC on possible issues. Just in October, NOAA met to discuss radio frequency interference for this next generation, and here we are standing in December 2022, and we don't have 6G standards, but we're not expecting them until we get out towards 2030. Our proposed coexistent solution. So, Quiet zones already exist around radio astronomy, but we realize with the proliferation of uh, mobile devices, especially in Green Bank, uh, the, the, lo the local area is not really completely quiet, uh, so there's issues there, but we believe this is still a valid solution. 
Um, our original idea was to schedule observations and adjust 6G services to prevent interference with the ESS satellite. However, after talking to someone on Noah's satellite team, we learned that they plan to launch a large number of CubeSats in the next few years, uh, to the point that the person we spoke to believed that it was not possible to use temporal coexistence without extreme difficulty. Um, instead, they proposed that there are very strict power limits on out-of-bounds emission and possibly stricter filter specifications for these transceivers. Um, and we also learned that NOAA currently doesn't have ways to know if data is being corrupted. So working on ways to detect radio frequency interference and make sure that if there is data that is corrupted, it is known ahead of time and not used for weather prediction. So our next steps are our open questions. We still don't have information on what 6G antennas are going to look like in terms of gains. We don't know exactly how sharp we can make these filters. We also don't have a lot of information on the EESS instruments. A lot of this, instrument, a lot of this data is protected. Um, and we have also have no idea if these frequencies are even going to be used uh, for 6G. Because there's no standard created yet, and because the allocations don't exist yet, we are not quite sure if this is going to be a problem. And also, we're looking at more in the technical area. Do we need to widen a guard band around the, the ESS satellites to prevent, to prevent any of the passive sensors picking up our 6G uh, signals? Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you.